other aluminum bar that we're going to press down on and we've got two rollers on that and that's what gives us our whole four point bend set up. So we're going to get pure bending between these top two rollers and then we're going to get bending with shear between these rollers here, which is why we've put our rosettes in those two locations so that we're able to, to sense the difference in strain from those two different conditions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the sheer bending. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah, no yeah, worries. I know it's so she's supposed to bend. No worries. So anyway, so we're gonna start with center, which is center, uh, which is the uh, pure bending. Or sorry, which is pure bending. So in our load train, we use what's called a spherical joint. So that's this piece right here. It's two cylindrical pieces with a bell bearing in the middle. So basically, oh, you want a picture? There. Uh, basically, this allows us to yeah. apply um, a load that's not off axis. So what happens is with this bolt, we have no way of ensuring, other than using this, that if we hit this bolt right down to the top of our specimen, that one side doesn't hit um, before the other side. So it's like a person who's walking and one leg's shorter than the other one. So one's going to hit sooner and one's, all the load is going to be distributed on that leg, right? So we want to make sure, though, that we get an even P over 2 and P over 2 on each of those rollers so we're able to have the, the setup for four-point bend. Um, so that's what this does. Is it allows us to apply it, uh, a load that's not so on axis. Another, like another ball bearing on the bottom of that? No, or? no. So it's just the one ball bearing, and then it just sits on top of the uh, spes or the beam, just like that. Don't you have to have this one in the center? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we'll line this up, make sure that it's it's lined up and it's conveniently the same diameter as our compressive bolt so that um, we're able to just uh, line it all up. But what I'm saying is like this one down here, mm -hmm. like you can even feel it, it's up yeah. to this side more, Yeah. but wouldn't yeah. it be more accurate to have another ball bearing or bolt or mm -hmm. point on the bottom of this one that went into that holder? It could be. Yeah, but this, oh. this one seems to work fairly, fairly well. That's I mean, thing, but. <laughs> but yeah, we can we can start getting as precise as we want to be. But then, basically, we figure out we won't run an experiment. We I've used a, a press with two ball bearings. You find a lot of uh, tests sometimes will do uniaxial joints on both ends, that sort of thing, to to take out any of those moments and everything like that. So, so it's a fairly common practice. Um, so all of our strain rosettes are connected into LabVIEW um, by the data acquisition system. So it's the same thing that we did for Lab 2 where we connected our strain gauge, except we've just done it nine times. So we've um, connected it all up and that sort of thing. And we do have that one connection for the output from the load cell, which is that voltage, and then it gets converted to load in the, um, in the LabVIEW program. So we have 10 inputs into our system right now, and then we're going to run it once for the center, and then we're going to switch it out, and we'll run it again for the side of the beam. So Hassan is right now calibrating the strain gauges for the center section. So before we run the test, we always have to calibrate them for the offset, uh, meaning that um, right now they're in a zero zero loading condition. There's there's no load on the, the beam right now. So we want the strain gauges to be reading zero strain. There's no strain. Um, so we want to make sure that the, that they're all calibrated to rereading zero right now. And once we've done that, we can um, check and verify that they're all reading low strain looks like close to zero. And then we can start our test. We'll start lab view first so that we make sure that it's acquiring data and then we're going to start test works. Um, we're going to run test works. Um, the crosshead's going to move down at 0 0.08 inches per minute. So that's the, the rate of speed of our test. And then um, it's going to go to a maximum load of 4,000 pounds. So 4,000 pounds is going to take our beam through the linear elastic region for aluminum as well as into part of the, the non-linear elastic range. So we're going to see that the, the load versus extension graph for the, the whole test is actually non-linear. Okay? Thank you. The center one doesn't want to don't worry about the details, I got you here in the video. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Can you build that? Yeah. Please. <laughs> so last time, Marco, we figured out what Yeah, last cool. time I was like, just gonna walk. M. What's MC? Oh, maybe that's W.
Okay, so that's that one. Is that the model? No, it says MC. Oh, no, it says... Okay, so this is... Middle, basically. it's middle center. Oh, so the okay. middle rosette, which is on the web, middle and then center. center. Two, three, yeah. bottom center. Okay. Yeah. So basically goes um, in the order that I've gone on the board. So so one is the plus 45 rosette, two is the zero, and three is the negative 45, and it just goes in that order for the whole Okay. Board. Is that going to be the same for the... Yes, it will oh, be okay. the same for the, for the uh, side section as well. So it was one is forty five and three is negative forty five. Yeah, and two is zero. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. You s said that the one of the questions on the our yep. essay report mm -hmm. was to calculate the strain at three thousand pounds mm -hmm. for each of these. Yep. Do you want us to just look at the load at three thousand pounds and tell you what the? No. Um. You'll have to. You'll part of the question is um plotting the strain versus load. Oh. Path. Okay. So plot them, get a trend line for the oh, data, okay. and then just solve that for three thousand. Oh. Okay. okay. That's all you have to do. For each string? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, for each no. one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. In the in the lab guidance it'll tell you like to give us basically give us the equations for all of them, uh, give us R squared values, that sort of thing. And then you just take those, plug in the three thousand and, and okay. get your values. So that's all we need. Yeah, we just don't need you to calculate uh, the X and Y strains and the shear strain for every point. It's uh, necessary. Okay.